This pack starts on Verdona, where Fiona Davis looks at a picture of herself and Minsk, then reminds herself what a siamitter is, before listening to a recording of Valerian talking to Kerrigan about removing his father. Then Davis says if something goes wrong during Valerian's abdication to kill him. Next, Valerian explains that Nova needs to take General Davis into custody, so Valerian can announce her arrest. In the enemy's shadow. The mission starts with Nova being told General Davis is in her office, and she'll need to travel through the sewers to get there. The sewers are full of ghosts who will chase Nova if they detect her, then give up and return to standing around doing nothing. Next, you can get some tech and use it to control a Thor. There are also several crates throughout the mission that allow you to change Nova's equipment. After leaving the sewers, you have to gain control of two rooms that operate the doors to General Davis's office. Fortunately, all the guards have no clue what to do when they encounter a ghost, other than chase them, give up, and return to exactly the same positions. There are also two pieces of tech and one secret one, along with a room that contains Delta and Pierce. After unlocking the doors, Nova notices a psionic presence, which turns out to be a brainwashed stone. Nova then has to fight Stone, and after beating him, arrests General Davis. The cutscene begins with Valerian exposing General Davis and the Defenders of Man using very little evidence. Then the Taldrin warp in and start attacking everyone. Alarak explains that as they believe this to be the base of the Defenders of Man, they're going to wipe out everyone. General Davis says Valerian could have prevented the situation she caused by attacking the Taldarim. Dark Skies The mission begins with several Defenders of Man squadrons defecting to Valerian's side, and Valerian setting up defensive positions in this random part of the city to hold this city while waiting for battlecruiser reinforcements. Fortunately, the Death Fleet isn't intelligent enough to fly over buildings, and has to follow the few roads into this city allowing the Dominion forces to set up roadblocks. They also haven't figured out how to attack this city from behind. There's also a science facility that gives you tech if you protect it. After enduring a few waves, Horner tells you some Gorgon battlecruisers have arrived. Nova can then call them down to clear a road, then they disappear until an arbitrary length of time passes. Eventually, the rest of the Dominion fleet arrives, and the gameplay doesn't change in any way. After defeating most of the Death Fleet, the rest attack your position in one huge attack. Once they're destroyed, you win the mission. However, the ship General Davis is on doesn't respond and flees. During the cutscene, Alarak tells Nova she's made a powerful enemy, and Nova implies Alarak has also made a powerful enemy. Next, Valerian says that after this attack, it'll be harder to convince people the Protoss aren't a threat, and Nova guesses this was the goal of the Defenders of Man. Valerian wants General Davis captured so she can be tried, but Nova wants to kill her. Valerian forbids this. General Davis is then tracked down to the Seroff shipyards. End game. General Davis has activated the Xanthos to destroy the Gorgons, which will somehow cause Valerian to lose control of the Dominion, despite him still having all his armies and other spaceships. General Davis then explains that she opposes Valerian for killing Mengsk. Throughout the mission, the Xanthos will attack the Gorgons and you have to save them. The Hyperion will also show up to help you attack General Davis's base. Once you do enough damage to the Xanthos, it activates the secret mode so this boss battle can have a phase 2. Once you beat the Xanthos, Nova heads to an underground area to confront General Davis. Upon finding her, Nova kills her. During the cutscene, Rigel admits that he was part of the Mobius Foundation, and that somehow this ruined his career. Also, for no reason, the crew is loyal to Nova, rather than the Dominion who pays their wages. Nova then says the Dominion needs her to solve their problems, even though her disobedience will likely cause even more problems. Next, Valerian is shown suffering no repercussion for everything that happened, so he lets Nova fly away in her ship. Conclusion. This pack was a mixture of good and bad. In the mission, in the enemy's shadow, the writers were able to non-verbally show that General Davis admired Mengsk and disliked Valerian in order to explain her motivations. Though it was odd that General Davis didn't use this taped conversation of Valerian to expose that he overthrew his father. 
even though Reyna tried to do the same thing to Mengsk in the Wings of Liberty mission media blitz. It's also a pity that General Davis got so little screen time that they had to establish her character in one mission. Overall, I'd say her characterization was well done in this pack, but poorly done in the previous two. My main issue with General Davis's motivations is, why did she wait until now to try to overthrow Valerian, when during Legacy of the Void, the attacks by Mobius and the Golden Armada would have weakened Valerian's regime to a far greater extent? In StarCraft Ghost, Colonel Hall had gotten over-involved because the KLF was trying to prevent him getting the Terezin he needed for Spectres. But in these packs, it's never explained why General Davis chose now to rebel. The writers had decided to copy some of the rebellion missions from Wings of Liberty instead of the colony and covert ones. They could have included a mission where General Davis finds Valerian's transmission with Kerrigan where he plans to overthrow his father. This would have explained why General Davis chose to revolt now rather than at any other time. I'd say this is a missed opportunity by the writers because they didn't plan the story. Regarding the mission itself, I liked how they explained the fates of Delta Pierce and Stone rather than just ignoring them. Though my main issue with the mission was that the door lock for General Davis's room were outside this room when there was literally no reason for them to not be in this room. This came across as the writers trying to artificially prolong the mission to a contrived scenario. Overall, despite the issues, I'd say this would have been a good mission to end the pack with, as it resolved most of the issues. The only unresolved plot issues are resolved in Dark Skies, where the Taldrian attack Verona because one of their bases was attacked by the Defenders of Man. As the Taldrian prized strength and Alarak wanted revenge, it's believable that they would ignore that the leader of the Defenders of Man had been captured and would attack anyway to demonstrate their power. Though there are several problems with this attack. The first issue is why does Valerian want to hold this city? If he was trying to buy time for everyone to evacuate or was defending an area full of civilians who couldn't evacuate? Like in Trouble in Paradise, this would make sense. But he doesn't mention either reason. I'd say this is more to do with the writers not explaining the plot clearly, rather than plot contrivance. The second issue is why are the Taldrim attacking this city rather than the rest of the planet? Unless this city is the only inhabited area on this planet, the Taldrim could simply ignore it, destroy the rest of this planet, then attack this fortified area. Once again, because the writers didn't explain why Valerian is defending this city, we don't know why the Taldrim want to destroy it rather than anywhere else on this planet. Yet again, this is another problem caused by the writers not explaining the plot. The third issue is that during the intro, Nova says she can keep the Taldrim scattered away from their bases, but during the mission, her base is clearly behind the Dominion and Defenders of Man bases. If Nova was meant to be the last line of defence, this would make sense. But if she was meant to be keeping the Taldrim scattered, she needs to be attacking the Taldrim forces as they approach these bases. So either the writers once again failed to explain what is meant to be happening in this mission, or they're using contrived reasons for Nova and the player to be protected by everyone else. The fourth issue is why is Nova the one telling the Gorgon battle cruisers where to attack? This would make sense if Nova was in command of all the ground forces. However, nothing in the intro indicates this. Either Admiral Horner or Dominion General should be commanding the ground troops and requesting air support. I suspect the writers wanted a mission where Nova had to command an army, but couldn't come up with a good reason why a ghost would command an army when the Dominion had an entire military structure that could command this army instead of her. So they just ignored this and created a mission where Nova acted like she was in charge, even though there was never any reason she'd be in charge. As such, it's another example of bad writing. The final issue is to do with how the Gorgon battle cruisers are being used. Once they arrive, or just leaves them in orbit until Nova calls them, then after flying the length of the map they disappear for an arbitrary length of time. While I understand that the developers didn't want the player to constantly use the Gorgons, there's no in-game reason why the Dominion can't constantly have the Gorgons attack the Taldrim, or use them to attack the Taldrim's bases. Other writers include a warning by Horner that after each attack the Gorgons would have to refuel, repair, or rearm. This would have explained why they couldn't constantly attack. But not why Horner was having the Gorgons defend this city instead of destroying the Taldrim bases. 
This issue in particular highlights all the previous issues, as we don't know why Valerian and Horner are defending this city with all their forces, rather than attacking the Taldrim's bases. While Nova is given command over how these Gorgons are used, even though she isn't commanding the ground or air forces. Had the writers put more thought into this mission, they wouldn't have created an intro that omits why the player needs to defend this city, or a mission where Nova is in command even though she has no reason to be commanding anyone. Overall, while this mission does resolve more of the plot points, it has many more problems as this mission doesn't match the intro, though this would be an okay mission to end the pack with. The same cannot be said for Endgame, which has many issues. The first issue is why does Nova tell Alarak she's a powerful enemy? Alarak has at least an entire planet of Protoss Templars who will obey him, along with a huge navy called the Death Fleet. By contrast, Nova only has one ship, a few soldiers, and need the help of both the Dominion and the Defenders of Man to defeat this part of the Death Fleet. All Nova's bravado will result in is Alarak being more likely to attack her or the Dominion with a larger Death Fleet. It seemed like the writer's desire to make Nova seem important, despite her resources being very limited, just comes off as Nova acting like a megalomaniac with no understanding of how ridiculous her claims are. The second issue is why did the Defenders of Man want the Protoss to attack the Dominion when they already had the Zerg who could be sent to attack specific planets by planting Psyomitters on them? The answer is still the same as in my previous analysis that the writers wanted to include Alarak and the Taldrim, but couldn't come up with a good reason to include them. Like Nova being on Tarsonis for no reason, this is an example of bad writing caused by poor planning. The third issue is why did Horner only bring a small number of forces? I suspect the reason is that if he brought a large fleet, Nova wouldn't need to be involved. Yet again, the writers are having characters make poor decisions, so Nova has a reason to get involved. The fourth issue is the lack of foreshadowing regarding how important the Gorgons are and the existence of the Xanthos. After Nova escaped Schrapsburg, there were ten previous missions in which Valerian or Horner could have explained how important the Gorgons were to the Dominion or that they were having problems responding to Zerg attacks because of Defenders of Man attacks on their Gorgons. Instead, we got nothing because the writers needed to come up with a gimmick for this mission, so they decided to have the player protect five Gorgons out of however many the Dominion has and wrote an intro that made them seem important despite never previously establishing this. Though the Xanthos was classified, the writers could have had the Defenders of Man hint that he had access to a powerful weapon in previous missions. The writers didn't hint at this because they wanted to add a boss battle in the last mission, so they just introduced a super weapon even though they had never previously mentioned it. Both are an example of bad writing caused by the writers not planning the entire plot in advance. The fifth issue is how using the Xanthos to attack the Gorgons doesn't fit with what the Defenders of Man did in previous missions. The Defenders of Man had previously used Psyomitters to attack Zerg to specific areas, so it would make sense for them to activate all their remaining Psyomitters and fire them at Korhol or wherever Valerian is to lure a large Zerg army towards him. Nova would then have to destroy the Psyomitters before even more Zerg came to this location. This would allow Pack 3 to have a mission where you have to fight the Zerg. I suspect the writers included a boss battle because StarCraft Ghost had numerous boss battles. However, in that game, the plot was about Ghost trying to become even more powerful, so it made sense for Nova to constantly battle powerful ghosts. The sixth issue is how has Rigel's career been ruined? He's currently working for the Emperor and doesn't seem to have any restrictions placed on him. I suspect the writers wanted to give Rigel a reason to go with Nova, but as they failed to show him facing any problems, this comes off as bad writing. The seventh issue is how has Nova earned the loyalty of her crew? Other than Rigel, she rarely ever speaks to them, and it was never even established why they would want to leave the Dominion. I suspect the writers wanted Nova to have a crew so she could lead her own faction in future games, but they gave her this crew in a contrived way. The final issue is why did Valerian let Nova go free? She's already shown to be disloyal by killing General Davis, and just because her actions this time didn't cause Valerian problems, doesn't mean she's going to continue to support Valerian or even act wisely. Ironically, all this will do is turn Nova into the new General Davis, someone who goes around doing whatever they want, and justify this by claiming that their actions will benefit the Dominion. Somehow I doubt the writers were self-aware enough to realise this.
Over all of the three missions, this was the worst one to end with, as it ends with Nova creating enemies for no real reason, and contains multiple contrived events so she can have her own crew that joins her going rogue. In conclusion, while these missions did resolve most of the plot points, there are also a lot of contrived events, such as Nova commanding a larger number of soldiers in Dark Skies, and her entire crew going rogue with her after Endgame, without any narrative reason why either would occur. General Davis was also a weak antagonist due to her lack of presence in the previous packs, so she wasn't a satisfying final boss. The problem with the timeline in Pack 2 was not resolved, nor is it explained why the Defenders of Man would want to attack the Protoss when they can control Zerg with Psyomitters. Thus this pack cannot redeem the previous two packs, as all three packs contained bad writing that undermined their plot.